healthy. In the last video, we treated electrons as particles, so we discussed the electron scattering. In this video, we'll treat electrons as wave, and we will discuss electron diffraction. This video will be a very, very short introduction on electron diffraction. In fact, the second part of this course will be focusing on electron diffraction. I'm quite certain you have learned the single slit experiment and the double slit experiment back in high school. You start with a plane wave with uniform intensity. After passing the slit or slits, the intensity of the wave is not uniform anymore, and you can see periodic patterns. The figure on the left depicts the intensity profile of the wave from the single slit experiment. It is also shown in the photograph down here. The figure on the right shows the intensity profile from the double slit experiment. And again, you can see that from the experimental data. This is what we have learned back in high school. Let's take a step forward. When talking about diffraction, there are two types. The first type is called the Fresnel diffraction. The second type is called the Fraunhofer diffraction. Fresnel diffraction is also called the near field diffraction. It is from the wave aperture or wave sample edge interaction. Fresnel diffraction gives rise to something we call Fresnel fringes. And by using Fresnel fringes, it can help us to focus the image, and also it can tell us the coherency of the beam. The second type of diffraction is called Fraunhofer diffraction. It is also called far field diffraction and is caused by the interference of waves. The typical examples are the double slit experiments you have seen in the previous slide, XRD, as well as electron diffraction, which we will discuss in details in the second part of this course. In the Fresnel diffraction, we mentioned that it will give rise to Fresnel fringes. The micrograph on the left shows the Fresnel fringes from the interaction of the electron beam with the aperture. It tells us that the beam is highly coherent. When doing imaging, you can make your micrograph out of focus, and if you see Fresnel fringes, this also tells you the beam is highly coherent. If your image is in focus, you will not see Fresnel fringes. We will talk more about it when we discuss imaging inside TEM. Moving to Fraunhofer diffraction. In fact, all the diffraction patterns we acquire in TEM, they are from Fraunhofer diffraction. Here are four examples of diffraction patterns from the Williams and Carter book. In the first example, you see diffuse rings, and this tells us the sample is amorphous. In the second example, you see spots. This tells you the area you selected for diffraction is a single crystal line. In the third example, you see very sharp rings. This tells you the sample is nanocrystalline. In the fourth example, you see disks. It is a special type of diffraction called convergent electron beam diffraction. To wrap up, I'd like to introduce you the general form of the wave function. The wave function phi is equal to phi naught multiplied by the e to the power of i omega. Phi naught carries the amplitude information, omega carries the phase information. The contrast in TEM is either from the change in amplitude or from the change in phase. Let's think about the phase difference. The phase difference delta omega is equal to 2 pi over lambda multiplied by delta x. Lambda is the wavelength, delta x is the path difference. If the phase differences are integral multiples of 2 pi, they will give rise to the constructive interference. Thus, we can see diffraction patterns. In both X-ray diffraction and electron diffraction, the path difference delta x is related to the interplanar spacing. This is how we relate the diffraction information to the lattice parameter of the crystals. In the next video, we'll go back to electron scattering and talk more about the elastic scattering.